Okay guys, today I'm going to be putting together a computer with Kira. And uh, let's get into this. So first off, what we're going to do is first we need an ESD wrist strap, which is to protect the electronic components from electrostatic discharge. We will also need a toolkit with the appropriate bits. Our motherboard is going to be our RG Crosshair Hero 7 Wi-Fi Edition. It's an X470, so our CPU, which I'm about to put in, is a Ryzen 7 1700. It is a PGA, or pin grid array, so it has pins on the CPU, and it is a zero insertion force. And as you can see, I pointed at the triangle in the corner. You line up the triangle in the corner with the triangle on the socket. You set it in, zero insertion, so you should take no force. You lower down the latch, and that is it. That's all you need to do to install the CPU. For our RAM, we have 16 gigabytes of Trent Z G Skilled DDR4 RGB memory. Our graphics card is a MSI GTX 1050. Our power supply is a Rosewell 850S 80 Plus Bronze Edition. And um, as you, now we are going to install the heatsink on the motherboard. For this motherboard specifically, the heatsink has a um, back plate which goes onto the back of the motherboard and um, you're really supposed to install the heat sink while the motherboard is still inside the box while the um, back plate still aligned here I had to take it out and flip the box over so to install the heat sink first you on this motherboard particularly you want to um, align the black back plate properly and then you have your thermal paste for Ryzen or not Ryzen for AMD processors your thermal paste application excluding your Threadripper variant um, you want to do um, a rice a grain of rice sized um, glob of thermal paste just a grain of rice a Intel is around a pea sized AMD excluding Ryzen, not Ryzen, my bad, excluding, excluding Threadripper is a grain of rice. So then you put on your appropriate amount of thermal paste, and after you do that, you want to take the heatsink and fan, or your CPU cooler, and um, you want to install that. To install that, for this one we're using the default or um, the heatsink that comes in the box from the AMD processor from our Ryzen 7 this is the in the box heatsink so although not terrible definitely better than Intel since Intel no longer includes one in the box <laughs> um, there are still better options out there but for putting a system together just to begin with it's it'll work fine it actually has a red light on the top which you'll see once we get the system working and to install it you want to um, push down the screws or push down the um, heat sink so that way the springs and the screws go down and you can screw and the screws into the screw holes and you want to screw them in diagonally so as you can see right here I'm screwing in this one on this side and I what I did was I screwed it just popped up a little bit so as you can see I'm gonna struggle putting this in for a little bit the springs on this were really <laughs> they were giving me a hard time so then I screwed in the left one a little bit and now I'm screwing in this side a little bit at a time so now that one's in all the way now this one's going to be screwed in maybe Yes, that one's screwed in all the way. And then, so you're going diagonally from corner to corner. So that way you can make sure that it is um, tightening down properly and screwing on in uh, even order. So, uh, I believe I'm just going to be putting that together for just a little bit. And uh, there's my big head right in the way of things. Okay. 
for our hard drive for this build, we're just going to use a um, 7200 RPM mechanical hard drive, which although for a system like this, a NVMe M.2 drive is ideal for your, especially for your Windows boot drive. We are not going to be um, installing Windows in this video and we're not going to be booting into Windows. We're just putting the system together and going to boot into the BIOS. That's all we're doing. As you can see right here, I am making sure all the screws are tightened, which for this style or this particular heatsink, the way you know that it's tightened all the way is the springs on there will continue to make noise until the screw is all the way in. Once the screw is all the way in, whenever you try to t um, tighten the screw, the screw will not move and there will be no noise. As you see right there, I plugged in the CPU hand hand fetter the CPU fan header which I actually plugged into the wrong spot which there's a hard drive I was talking about but I actually plugged in the CPU hand fetter dang I did it again I plugged in the CPU fan header into the wrong spot the CPU fan header is actually at the top of the motherboard above the dim slots I plugged it into a um, what's it called I plugged it into a chassis hand fed I've done it for a third time wow so right there I plugged it into a um, chassis fan header so here we're going to install the RAM again 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RGB memory from Trident Z from G skill and this memory is super cool, it's super high performance, it's not the best. You can, um, for this memory you can overclock it, technically overclock it with the um, BIOS of this motherboard. You can use an XMP profile. For this motherboard particularly, the, I put, the way I put the heatsink on, I actually cannot use slots 1 and 3 on the motherboard, which RAM channels are DIM channels on the motherboard to use dual channel memory is slots 1 and 3 and 2 and 4. Because the way I put the heatsink on, instead of using 1 and 3, I have to use 2 and 4. This specific motherboard, instead of, well, let's see. For most motherboards, you have latches on both sides of the DIM slot. that You, you have to push down both of them and then insert the DIM slot and push on both sides until it clicks. On this motherboard specifically, um, especially, it's prominent with ASUS motherboards. I'm not sure about any other, but I know for a fact that a lot of ASUS motherboards, you actually have to push. You put in the dim slot on one side where there's one side where there's no latch, and then on the other side, you push it down until it clicks. Here, this motherboard is super nice. It does not have a I/O shield. The I/O shield is pre-built onto the motherboard, and we already have our power supply um, put into the system. We're not going to show you guys how to do that, but just to just a heads up or a tip make sure it's usually best to make sure that you have all the cables in your power supply that you're going to need plugged into your power supply if it's modular before you put it in because it just makes it easier for the to install it we set the motherboard down in there and we align it with the standoffs and we're just going to put in I believe four screws one in each corner of the motherboard to fasten the motherboard down which this is a, this is one of those situations where a toolkit is super helpful because my screwdriver is extendable, so I can extend my screwdriver to get super far down in there. See right there, I can extend my screwdriver, and my bit's magnetic, so I can hold on to the screw and I can get into those hard to reach places that you normally wouldn't be able to reach. And just like that, our motherboard's installed. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to install or plug in the motherboard power connector which is a 20 plus 4 or a 24 pin power connector I will say you guys are going to think this is completely ugly and criticize us for this uh, this system is going to look like a rat's nest we're not going to do cable management this video is simply for the process of showing you guys putting it together so no cable management so here we are 
about to install the um, the 24 pin or actually I'm wrong I completely skipped over that here we're going to install a graphics card we'll install the 24 pin in just a minute and our graphics card as you can see I did not align it right to put in the graphics card you first have to take out the slots on the motherboard which usually involves undoing a screw and then wiggling the shield until it comes out which it will break off but that's what it's supposed to do and then you have to align the clips on the end and push it down into the PCI slot or PCIe slot until it clicks there's a little latch on it you push it down and then it will click see right there I pushed it down and it did not click all the way so I had to take it out and as you see right there I have already removed the slots on the end and I am aligning it you have to align those little metal brackets on the bottom push it down until it clicks and then you have to screw the cover back into place or here you can see I found out I plugged in the the CPU fan into the wrong header so I fixed it or I am fixing it rather what's really cool about this motherboard from Asus is on older motherboards and on, still on certain mod modern motherboards your start pin connectors you usually have to turn on the motherboard by finding your um, positive and negative pins of your start button connector on your front panel header for this motherboard it has a start button on the case not on the case on the motherboard for you to turn it on without having to short out the pins here I am fastening down the motherboard with the screws that I took out earlier to remove the brackets or the shielding and I am putting in two screws it's gonna take a second okay this system is quite RGB it's not over the, it's a little over the top but it's not super bad here I'm going to like I said I'm going to install the motherboard connector the 20 plus 4 or the 24 pin power connector from the motherboard which our power supply is modular which I already said that but our power supply is modular and I'm just gonna stuff this down here it's gonna look ugly but don't worry about that if you guys look in the bottom right corner I've already installed the hard drive which for this case you plug it into you put it in a bracket and it slides and clips in here for your power not power supply for your graphics card you need a PCIe 6 pin 6 pin or a 6 plus 8 pin power connector which I apologize I was wrong that's not what I'm doing here here for your CPU that's what we're plugging in you need your either depending on your motherboard and CPU you either need a 4 pin power connector or a 8 pin power connector sometimes it will be a 4 plus 4 for the 8 pin which I plug that back in there here is your 6 plus 8 pin not 6 plus 8 your 6 plus 2 pin PCIe power connector for your graphics card it's a 6 plus 8 because some graphics cards use 8 pins some of them use 16 pins but this graphics card in particular only uses 6 so we're only going to use the 6 part of the connector this is a fancy little gadget we have that it's basically a riser for our headers for our start panel and it also labels them for what we need and helps us see easier basically only thing this does is it saves us a little bit of time instead of trying to reach in the motherboard and plug in the con the the connectors onto the right headers we can basically just line them up on this and plug them into this and then plug in that whole housing onto the entire front panel connector so it just saves us a little bit of time which for me arguably would take about the same amount of time as I struggle to get it on <laughs> arguably about the same amount of time which right there I am about to plug it in Again, I apologize, the K 
case is ugly. The case is very ugly. Well, not the case, but our cable management's ugly. I do not know what case this is. Um, I should know the model of the case. I do not. I believe the case is uh, Rosewell. I might be wrong. But it has two 240mm fans. I believe it's 240mm RGB fans in the front of the case. And it has two tempered, um, two tempered glass side panels. It also has support for a radiator mount and a cooling and a water loop pump. So this system does support liquid cooling, which we are not going to show how to install liquid cooling on this system. We might do that later, I'm not entirely sure. But on this system particularly, we're not going to install liquid cooling. Jeez. I'm our, I'm I'm quite in the way, aren't I? I'm quite in the way. Okay, right there. Finish getting on the header. And now, since we are not going to boot into Windows or install Windows, only thing we need to do, we're not going to plug in the hard drive to the SATA port, or plug in the hard drive at all for that matter. Now we're just going to plug in the power supply and turn on the switch on the back of it. And we are going to, first we're going to plug in the keyboard and mouse into the USB ports on the back. And then we're going to push the power button inside of the computer case on the motherboard. And to make sure it turns on. As you can see right there, the, um, the IO shield turned on for a second and we're going to there's a case fan right there which we forgot to plug in so we're going to plug that in now into the appropriate fan header which is actually the same one that I plugged the CPU into the CPU fan into earlier which was wrong for the CPU but right for this fan header these motherboards also have a indicator on them for your postcode which is super nice and right now this is for the front panel USB 3.0 which uses that blocky connector some motherboards, as this motherboard, also have a different type of connector, which I apologize, I do not know the name of that connector. Here we just plug it into the appropriate slot and jam it, the cables down back into the rest of our rat's nest. Here's our HD audio, or our, our, our microphone and headphone jack, or our combined jack on the front slash top of the computer case which will plug that into the appropriate header which will be named audio or HD audio on the motherboard which I I did it wrong apparently so I'm going to do it again Now we're going to install the USB 2.0 instead of the USB 3.0. USB 3.0 is faster, so it, should, it has more pins, so it requires that blocky connector. This is USB 2.0. Its speeds are slower, but it's still the same connector type, same physical connector. And we're going to plug this into the appropriate header as well, also named USB. Now, if I remember correctly, we're going to turn on motherboard or we are going actually we are plugging in the system fan for the front of this case which the front of this case has a controller board for the front of the for for the front fan so you can change the fan colors which is what that is that right there is a P SATA adapter that comes with it so you can plug it in to operate the fans and also power the fans in this case because the front um, front two four two forty millimeter fans require separate power okay now we're going to plug in the cable into the back of the power supply which I said I did earlier which I I thought I was doing that uh, I did do that earlier and I was wrong 
as you can see right there, the, it receives power. We push the power button to make sure the system works. And you can see the glow of the front case fans and our RGB memory. There's not over top RGB and our system is very rat's nest because we, like I said, we're not doing cable management. So we can see right here that the computer visibly boots. And we should be cha um, changing the angle of the camera soon. So that way um, we can see the post screen. See, now you can see the CPU fan has lit up. So it is RGB, and we're going to connect in this case DVI, a DVI connector, because our motherboard is not motherboard, our uh, monitor is DVI. We are not using a HDMI or DisplayPort monitor. And if you look at our graphics card, our fans are not spinning. That's because we're in the BIOS, and this graphics card is a special graphics card, which I believe all newer graphics cards, I believe they all do this. I'm not entirely sure. I'm stupid. I stuck my finger in the CPU fan. But all I'm okay, I stopped it. I'm playing with the CPU fan. Don't do that. I'm being dumb. Don't play with the CPU fan. Um but the graphics card fans, they will only turn on when they need to when the graphics card gets to a certain temperature. So they will only power on when they are needed to be powered on to save power and to reduce ambient noise. Hopefully soon I will change the angle of the camera so that way we can see. And I can show you guys the BIOS that it is working. Okay. Moving the monitor. There's our messy workstation in Kira. And there is our there's our post screen. So if you look right there, AMD Ryzen 7 1700 8 core processor, speed 3000 megahertz or 3 gigahertz and our 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3000 megahertz. There's our USB devices, no hard drive because we didn't plug it in, our one keyboard, and our one mouse. CPU fan speed error um, detected, that's from whenever I stuck my finger in the fan and I slowed it down, I generated that error because it made the computer think that the fan broke or the fan stopped or is breaking, which it wasn't. It was purely me messing with it. So shortly here, we should be entering into the BIOS, and we will be wrapping this video up. But before we enter into the BIOS, I want to say thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope to do more videos like this in the future. This is going on not only my channel, but um, Eli Walker for Central Georgia Technical College. There's the BIOS. Okay, but this is going on Eli Walker, Central Georgia Technical College YouTube channel. Check out his channel for more computer builds as he is my professor and he's the one teaching this class. So thank you guys for watching.